Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm showing you how to make these cute wooden houses with your Cricut. Making this sign does require some basic woodworking skills. If you're not a woodworker or you don't have access to a saw, you can cut the houses out of vinyl and put them on a wood sign instead. For this project, you'll need wood for the houses, and I use 6 inch and 4 inch pine. You'll need wood for the roof, and I use some furring strips, paint and a brush, and I use white and a few different shades of gray. You'll also need adhesive vinyl, and the color doesn't matter since it's going to be a stencil. You'll need transfer tape, a scraper and weeding tool, sandpaper, glue, you'll need both hot glue and wood glue, twine, your Cricut, a cutting mat, and the cut file. So grab your supplies and then head over to your computer. So the first thing that we need to do is grab the SVG file we'll be using for this project. You can get it for free on my blog at burtonavenue.com. I keep all the SVG files for these projects that I make and share in my free SVG library. These files will work with all kinds of cutting machines and they're free to everyone. Once you're on my site, just go ahead and click on free SVG files and then free SVG library. You will need a password to get into the library and there are instructions on the screen if you need to get one. Once you're in the library, you can search for the file home sweet home. It will either be listed under the most recent projects and cut files or under the everyday category. You can also use your browser search to find it. I have added the unique code BA1464 after the file name to make finding the file a little bit easier. Once you've found the file, go ahead and click on it and it will be downloaded onto your computer. Now when you download these files online, they come in a zipped folder and you'll need to unzip or extract them before you can use them in Cricut Design Space. To do this, you'll need to go to the location where downloaded files are saved onto your computer. Once you're there, look for that zipped folder that we just downloaded and double click it. A new window will open and somewhere you should see the option to extract or unzip. Click on that and another window will open up. And this will show you the destination where the unzip files will be saved onto your computer. You need to remember this location because you're going to have to get to it once you get into Cricut Design Space. Now go ahead and click on Extract and those files will be unzipped and they're now ready to use in Design Space. So let's head over there and start a new project. Once you're on this Canvas screen, you can click on the Upload button and then click on Upload Image and then click Browse. And now you'll want to go to that folder that we just unzipped and double click on it. Once you're inside of that folder, you'll see several different file types listed and we want to use the SVG file. Now you'll notice that no SVG file is showing up here. And if that happens, you need to look for a Microsoft Edge HTML document or a Chrome HTML document. And one of those will be your SVG. So you're gonna click on that and then click on open and make sure it's the file that you want to work with and then click upload. Select that image one more time and click insert images. And now your design will appear on your canvas screen. So the first thing that we need to do is ungroup the design because right now, if you select any part of the design, it selects all of it and we can't resize individual pieces. So we're going to right click and choose ungroup. And then we are going to delete the roof pieces since we don't actually need them out of vinyl. The next thing that we're going to do is resize these different house pieces. So first we'll work with this large one and I'm just gonna go up and change the width to 5.75 inches. And that will just make this stencil a little bit bigger than our wooden house so that these lines should go from one edge to the other. 
So that's all that we need to do on this piece. Now let's work on this smaller house. So I'm going to change the width of this to three and a half inches since that's the width of the smaller house piece. And then you're going to right click and choose attach. And that will just lock the home sweet home and the little heart into this house piece so it all cuts onto one piece of vinyl. The last thing that we need to do is just change these pieces so they're both the same color so that they'll both cut on the same cutting mat. So we can actually do that over here in the color sink. We can select on this bigger house and just move it down and it will turn it the same color as the small house. And that's all that we need to do on this canvas screen. So now we can go up and click on the green make it button. And Cricut Design Space will put these both on one mat. And I am just going to select this house and just scoot it over a little bit to give a little bit more space to cut them apart. If everything looks good, you can click on the green continue button. Once Design Space finds your Cricut, you'll be taken to this screen. Make sure that your dial is set to vinyl and then you can go load your cutting mat. So place your piece of vinyl on your cutting mat and smooth it out so there aren't any wrinkles or bubbles. Then you can load it into your Cricut by pressing the up and down arrow button. Once your Cricut is ready to cut, you'll see that C button light up. Press it and the machine will begin cutting out your design. Once it's finished, you can press the up and down arrow button again to unload your mat. Remove the vinyl from the cutting mat and weed away any excess vinyl. Since this is a stencil, you'll want to pull out the letters, the little lines, and that heart. You can use your weeding tool to make it a little bit easier. Now cut a piece of transfer tape a little larger than your design and place it sticky side up on your work surface. Then you can place the vinyl on top of that and smooth it down. Rub over the entire design firmly with your scraper tool and then trim off the excess transfer tape and cut apart the two designs. Now that our vinyl's done, we're going to work on our little wooden houses. To make these houses, you'll need a piece of six inch and four inch pine. You'll want to cut the six inch pine to eight and a half inches tall and the four inch pine to four and a half inches tall. Then you'll cut the tops of both of those pieces at a 45 degree angle to create your roof shapes. You'll also need to cut two six inch pieces and two four inch pieces of a furring strip and cut those ends at a 45 degree angle also. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't want to use wood, you can also cut these pieces out of vinyl. Now we're going to paint our wood pieces. You'll want to paint the roof pieces a dark gray, the large house white, and the small house a light gray. And you'll probably need to do a couple of coats on all of these pieces so that they have a nice even coverage and then you'll want to let them all dry completely. Now grab that small house stencil and pull off the vinyl backing. Position it on your small piece of wood and the shape should match up pretty close. Grab your scraper and rub over the vinyl a few times and then pull off the transfer tape. Now repeat these steps with the larger stencil. Cover both stencils with a light coat of paint that's the same color as the house. So for the larger house, you'll cover the stencil with white paint, and on the smaller house, you'll cover the stencil with gray paint. This step is optional, but it will help to prevent bleeding. Once that paint dries, you can fill in the stencil. For the larger house, I just added a little bit of white to my dark gray paint and painted on the stripes. On the smaller house, I used white for the words and pink for the little heart. Once again, you'll probably need to do two coats of all of those colors. Once that paint is dry to the touch, you can carefully pull off the vinyl stencils. You can use a weeding tool or a craft knife to help you remove those tiny pieces from inside of the letters. Give that paint a little bit more time to dry and then lightly sand over the edges and tops of the houses. You can also sand the edges of the roof pieces. 
Now we're going to assemble our wooden houses. So you'll want to add some glue to the wooden roof pieces and then glue those on top of your house shape. Allow those a little bit of time to dry and then take the small house and put some glue on the back of it and position that one on the bottom right corner of your larger house. Once that glue has dried, you can wrap some twine around the larger house a few times and tie it in a knot. Cut the end short and then glue on a little twine bow. And that's it. This project is finished. Didn't it turn out cute? If you enjoyed this project and you want to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe so you can get notified each time I post a new video.